Hello everybody, it's Father Norm. Hey, I have an easy question for you today. What very famous inspirational saint that we celebrate his feast day in this coming week? And I'm sure everybody here legitimately are going to say St. Patrick. And certainly we love what he did and the stories of his life and bringing uh, faith to Ireland. Uh, people also love some of the St. Patrick uh, get-togethers that they can celebrate, uh, hopefully in, in, in an inspirational way. Uh, but you know what? That was not who I was thinking of, because I knew you'd go there. You'd miss the question on Jeopardy. Who I was thinking of is a feast day this coming Friday, March 19th. Maybe a few of you know that and could make a legitimate guess. Uh, I can give you the answer. This Friday is the Feast of St. Joseph, the father, foster father, however we want to name him, of, of Jesus himself. And we know that uh, this year, Pope Francis has spoken of this year as the year uh, to, in a special way, commemorate and remember uh, St. Joseph. And, and all that he did. And that for us, he should be an inspirational, uplifting figure uh, from all, all that he did that we don't know much in scripture, but we know the very core of the man and how and why God chose him. And as, as we look at this, uh, we need to uh, reflect a little bit on his life. You know, there's not, again, as I mentioned, not a lot said about Joseph, much more about the Blessed Mother Mary. But Joseph was in the background, but in the background, he was truly a man of God who listened to the Lord and asked God to work through him to help protect that family that he had, a family man and a hard and conscientious worker supporting the family through the years. Uh, so we know that uh, from the start, uh, he was trusting God, even though he could have had legitimate reason to say, God, I don't know if I should trust you. You may know the story. Mary was told she was uh, uh, to give birth uh, uh, to the Christ. And uh, so she was pregnant. But Joseph didn't know that yet. And he was going to divorce her quietly. because Quietly, interestingly enough, because if he divorced her publicly, like maybe some men, especially, especially in a patriarchal culture, might do. Oh, look what you did to me. And you've shamed me. And they might have said it publicly. And, and, and Mary could have been stoned. But no, Joseph, not fully understanding, but deciding that I'm not going to do anything to hurt her. I'm going to keep this quiet. She's a good woman, and I still love her, whatever she's done. And of course, then, uh, uh, actually, uh, St. Joseph gets the message and finds out, ultimately from God, that she is with the child, the Christ, and, and what's happening here, and what he's called to do. And wow, he... Obviously, it was good he didn't do anything prematurely, you know, hurting her, thinking what she did to him. Uh, the key point being that Joseph must have already been that kind of man, that God would cho cho choose uh, Joseph uh, uh, to, to be the father in this, in this family. And, and so uh, he, he, he showed that. He, he, he trusted God and trusted that somehow even something that looked terrible uh, and, and hurt him deeply would work out for the good in the end. And it did. It's a good reminder for all of us. Joseph also had to listen to God going down to Bethlehem and having the census there, even though Mary was in her ninth month. And, okay, God, I guess we're both going to trust you with this. And then later we know that Herod was killing the, 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 the infant boys and, and Joseph was told in a message to go down to the Egypt. They became refugees, if you will, and listened to God and then eventually came back. We know that, uh, again, uh, one other great story, jo when Jesus is uh, in the temple and he's talking to the elders there and his, uh, his parents uh, leave uh, Jerusalem from having been there and for the great festival, and he's not there, and they don't find him. Uh, but eventually, uh, you know, they come back, and Joseph says, or excuse me, Jesus says to Joseph and Mary, didn't you know I needed to be about my father's business? Wow. In one way, again, Jesus speaking a, a wisdom, a truth, but I'm sure Joseph and Mary both must have been hurt somewhat, and like, son, why didn't you tell us? At least let us know. And then the reminder, which Joseph had to be open to, that Jesus' ultimate father 
was our Lord and God. And that uh, he was there and he was important, but his son saw God as the, uh, as the great father for him. Uh, Joseph obviously could have been troubled by that, but I think we see have a sense when they say Jesus went back with his parents and grew in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man, that uh, Joseph was okay with that. Joseph knew that he wanted this son of his in a, in a human way. He wanted his son to know that God was his heavenly father and loved him very deeply and chose Joseph and trusted in Joseph to help raise him. And we know that uh, we don't hear much more about Joseph. Uh, certainly he was a carpenter. And even there, we need to understand that uh, when one time when Jesus was being put down, they said, who is this Jesus speaking and doing miracles and preaching on and on? Isn't he just the carpenter's son? Because in those days, that was considered a, a slam, you know, a carpenter's son, common labor. And he's doing this. He's not a priest. He's not a scribe. He's not somebody important. Why should he be doing this? But we know that Joseph, again, we can measure, you know, he's a day laborer, or <clears throat> blue collar. We know now, even in our own day, that, that that work, that conscientious work, which he did and didn't try to make a show of it, was faithful and obedient, uh, was what he was all about. Finally, I'd say this about Joseph. Think about it. We know that Jesus called God, Abba, his heavenly father, asked us to do it too. But one of the ways he must, must have come to know in his humanness, uh, to know what it meant to be a father was from Joseph. He must have experienced the kindness, the love, uh, the, the goodness, uh, the, the attentive care from his, his human father, uh, foster father, Joseph, uh, Joseph. Yeah, and in some way, because Joseph was so lovingly good and fatherly, Jesus, through him, came to an even deeper sense of what his heavenly father must be. So there's a, there's a story for all of us. Uh, we're all called to be saints. Uh, people don't necessarily need to know everything we've done, that we do the day-to-day -day stuff. We do it faithful and loving. And even finally with Joseph, we know that he had died before he got to see his son doing his, his beautiful, powerful ministry. But he still trusted, even though he didn't see what he knew his son was to be all about. At whatever point he died, we don't even know. But we know that in, in some humble sense, it was okay. He didn't have to see it. He did his work in an everyday, caring way, and that mattered most. Let's remember St. Joseph along with St. Patrick. God bless you.